hi I'm glad you stopped by today because today we've got my fine work bow sport now this gun when I first got it was buzzing like crazy at the shot it had very harsh recoil and uh, when you cock it it made some god-awful um, grinding and squeaking noises that I just couldn't tolerate rather than send it back to the factory I really want this gun I really want to keep this gun I just like a lot of things about it but I didn't like the shot cycle nor the sound that it made when I was cocking it so I decided instead of sending it back that I would do a full tune on it and um, I'm very new to this the, the most experience I've had with tuning this spring piston powered air rifles is by installing Vortec kits on all of my HW guns um, there's no Vortec kit available for this gun so I had to fabricate some parts uh, namely a spring guide I also sleeved the piston and uh, I cut a coil and a half off the mainspring in order to tame it down a little bit and get the recoil down because the other problem I was having was that the scope would not stay in position on this gun. In fact, it marred the receiver. If you haven't seen it already, I'd highly recommend that you uh, find my other video on my first impress impressions on the Feinberg Bow Sport and you'll get a much better idea of what it was like. But just so I can save you a little time, here's a couple of clips of the cocking noise as well as the firing noise the buzz when you fire it so take a look at that and then we'll get into the tuning process thanks again for stopping by but listen to it listen to this brand new gun that costs in excess of five hundred dollars is that what you expect the gun in this price point to sound like when you cock it listen again i don't expect that Fire shot number one. Sounds like a sick duck. Here we can see the numbers for the Finework Bio Sport air rifle before any tuning was completed. Uh, as you can see, the extreme spread is very good. Hopefully, we'll be able to maintain that. Um, so, time will tell. But stick around because we're going to dive into that rifle right now. So today we're going to begin the disassembly process on the Feinwerk Bow Sport Air Rifle. And that's in preparation for a full tune we're about to give it to get rid of some of the buzz. Hopefully all of the buzz. And some of the other harsh firing characteristics. As well as a really terrible squeak when you cock the rifle. kind of a nice touch I don't know if you can see that but right here is a little rubber bushing that keeps tension on the cocking rod when the guns at rest and the barrels closed right here a little rubber button so that when the barrel is closed there's no rattles that's very nice like this right here is what's going to release the mainspring wasn't too bad I still don't think I'm gonna get it back together again without a spring compressor okay so the first thing I notice that the, the spring is got a little coating of molly on it so it's not dry like somebody suggested 
One of the other first things I noticed is why this thing's got so much buzz is the slop between the piston guide is ridiculous. There's so much room here for movement. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's one of the main reasons this thing's buzzing like hell. I can guarantee that. a lot of tension off this screw so that it'll come out that much easier that's your pivot pin and it's lubricated as well so whoever told me that these things are dry from the factory was mistaken because this stuff's not dry not at all let's get this out of here take the talking link off These little washers look like they might stay in position, but I don't think I'm going to try to move those. I'll just wrap that up and put it in the safe place until my new piston seal comes in. Speaking of piston seals, let's have a look at our piston seal. Oh, there's a cocking link, of course. Get that out of there. That's a really nice, sturdy cocking link. Look at how well that's made. I don't know if you can see the design of it. It's very nice. So I'm, I'm impressed with the rifle. I'm, it's, the build quality is there. It's just the, the final details aren't really all that good. From what I've been told by a couple of the forums and also looking at um, looking at uh, ARH's website, I believe it's ARH, they have a, uh, a replacement piston seal, and they say that the original piston seal is prone to falling off of the gun. <laughs> so, and that, folks, is the disassembly procedure for the new Finework Bio Sport air rifle. Yeah, look how loose that is. Look at this. I can pull this off with my fingers. I don't need a, a screwdriver or anything. Now see, some of the build quality is there and other parts of the build quality, look at that. That's insane. I've never seen one come off this easy. And if it comes off this easy outside the gun, it could very easily come off inside the gun. All right. So today we made a piston sleeve, which is nothing more than a sheet of plastic that's folded in such a way that it will stay in place under spring tension that slides down inside the piston. You probably can't see it in there because the plastic is clear. So what I've done is I've made a second one so that I can show you basically what, what you do. Um, now this is again, it's just a two liter soda bottle cut to the proper dimensions to fit down inside. And you do that basically by trial and error. And once you've made the, the cylinder, you're going to take and cut little teeth into the top edge of your, your um, rectangle so that when you fold it, these form a little lip for which the spring can push against to keep it in place so it won't slide back out of the piston. There's always tension on that spring, so it'll always be held into place. Now, I have no idea how long this will last. This is just, um, this is a, a real soft piece of plastic that's going to have a little bit of friction of the spring going back and forth um, over the lifetime of the gun so I'll probably have to replace this from time to time but we'll see I'm, I'm curious to see what the lifespan is of this sleeve so anyway what it does is it takes up slack when you install a piston in the gun without the sleeve if you were to just take the spring slide it over the uh, the, uh, the rod here just slide it over and it would drop right into place and it would just hit bottom like with a thud. Uh, there's no friction at all holding it in place so it's just going to drop to the bottom. And then if you were to tip it over it would fall right back out again. So what the sleeve does is it takes up a little bit of tolerance that's in there 
and it makes it for a much more snug fit. So the spring goes in without a lot of due effort, uh, undue effort, and it won't fall out under the weight of the piston. But if I shake it, it'll fall right out. Again, I'll show you. If I shake it, it falls out. So there's just a little bit of tension there, just enough to keep the noise down. Anyway, we'll see how it works, and we'll see how long it lasts when this gun's back okay, together. So today we're going to cut the spring on the fine work bio sport. I've marked where I want to cut it. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's a little black line right there in front of my finger. Yep. All right, so we're going to cut it there, and then we'll collapse the uh, the coil. We'll grind it, and then uh, I'm going to take it to my polisher and polish up the ends. So here's how we do it. I'm going to chuck it up in the vise. I'm going to take my little Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel, and I'm going to cut this right about here. down to length and put a little angle on it that'll help when we do the grinding process next we're going to heat it up and collapse it what you're going to need for that is a pair of needle nose pliers I've got some used motor oil here to quench it and you'll need a propane torch to heat it up to the point where it's malleable which is uh, about cherry red color so here we go if I can turn this on All right. Somebody online said that you should quench it in cold water. I'm no metallurgist, but I think that's a bad idea. I think that's going to make the steel brittle and the, the spring will be prone to breaking. So that's what we got right there. I'm going to clean that up with a rag and then we'll take it to the grinder. So here's our spring. You can see where we made the cut right here. What we're going to do now is grind it so it's nice and flat like this end right here. This is the factory end. We're going to try our best to make this end look very similar to the factory end. Alright, so here's how we do that. I'm going to take it up to a disc sander and we're going to just turn it as we grind away and we'll just keep checking as we go through the process. the grinding goes. Next step is to polish that up to reduce the friction when the spring expands and contracts as it's being compressed. All right. So what we've got is a piece of Delrin rod that I cut to the proper length so it's just about the same length as the, uh, the original guide. 
and we're going to turn this down into a snug fitting guide. What we're looking for is something a lot tighter than this fits. We want something that's going to be snug inside the spring. So that's what we're aiming for. And uh, let's see what we can do on the lathe. Okay, so the first step is to drill the hole for the, uh, the piston rod. So that's going to be a hole that runs dead center right through this piece here. So that's the first step. And we're going to get that going right now. Now we've got a hole bored straight through the center of the stock and now we're going to turn it down and form the, uh, the spring guard. So this is the completed piston guide, or uh, I should say spring guide. This is the original spring guide, and if you look how they go into our spring, the original goes in, you can hear it rattling around, and it'll just fall right out. There's no tension whatsoever. What we were looking for was a much more snug fit and a quieter material, and so this Delrin should quiet the gun right down. So this goes in like so, will not drop out, it takes a little bit of effort to get it in and out of the spring. So that's our completed spring guide, we're going to reassemble the gun and give it a couple of shots and see what we got. In this photo, you'll see some nail polish on the clamps of the ring mounts. Uh, and this is to let me know if there's any um, scope creep. If uh, the scope does move, if the rings slide in those rails, then this nail polish will crack, confirming that the scope is in fact moving. Uh, so far, after a few dozen shots, there doesn't seem to be any movement. However, I won't know for sure until after several hundred rounds. So if you're curious and you need to know, send me a comment in the comment section and I'll let you know in a couple of weeks. Okay, so welcome back to the shooting bench. And today's the big day. We're going to test this tune and see if it worked or see if it was a failure. Um, now, I didn't show you the reassembly process because it was nothing more than the disassembly process in reverse. However, I did employ a spring compressor to get it back together. Even with that shortened mainspring, it still took quite a bit of effort, and I was worried about damaging the rifle if something were to slip while I was pushing it in by hand, um, while compressing that mainspring by hand. And so I used the spring vise, and that really helped out a lot. It freed up both my hands so I could line things up and get the gun back together again without a lot of effort. Um, also, while it was apart, a couple of things that we didn't see uh, in the video were that I greased, lightly greased the edges of the piston seal and the piston itself with some molybdenum or molly grease. I greased both ends of the spring. I greased the spring itself with um, some leftover grease that I got from a Vortec kit that I put in one of my HW rifles. Uh, both ends of the spring got molly. Uh, and I think that was it as far as lubrication. Oh, it was uh, the cocking shoe and the guides that it rides in were, uh, were both polished and then mollied as well. Just to see if that would quiet down the cocking cycle a little bit more. So the first thing we need to test is the cocking of the gun to see if we got rid of that awful squeak and that uh, grinding noise that we were getting. It sounded like rusty bed springs. Now my microphone is right down here on my clothing. You might hear a little noise from my clothes as I cock the gun, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear what the gun sounds like. 
rather than what my clothing sounds like. So let's break the action and see how it sounds. I don't hear those bed springs, do you? Oh, that was a success. Let's see how the shot cycle is. What we're looking for is a nice smooth recoil. It should be a little lessened than it was with that longer spring in it. And we're looking for no vibration and no spring buzz. We'll take a couple of shots just down into down range a little bit without um, shooting at anything in particular. That way we can hear what the gun sounds like instead of the impact of the pellet. So first shot number one. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> to say I'm pleased would be an understatement. There's no vibration. A, a slight and very positive recoil and no spring buzz. I'll be smiling for a week folks. This is really really exactly what I was hoping to achieve. Let's hear that again. Watch the rifle. Look for the recoil and keep your ears open for that shot cycle. <laughs> you are looking at one very happy air gunner. So we're going to ring that bell a couple of times as a victory chime because we did it folks. We took a monster of a gun as far as the shot cycle goes. Um, <laughs> beauty and the beast basically. It was a beauty of a rifle with a beast of a firing cycle and cocking noise. So, And we took that gun and turned it into a beauty on the inside as well as the outside. So we're going to ring the bell as a victory lap. I'm going to be smiling for a month. One more time. I can't thank you enough, folks, for um, staying tuned and watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you stick around for more. If you can see it in your heart to subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. And click on that bell and you'll be notified each time I release a new video. We concentrate mainly on springers here. I might throw a PCP in once in a while just to keep interest from other folks. But uh, mainly it's going to be springers. And uh, I really hope to see more of you guys. And I'm looking forward to the next video. hope you are too. Thanks so much for stopping in. And thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.